What's up everyone? So today we're gonna be grilling at Brown Town. We're gonna grill two prime New York strip steaks on my old school Weber kettle grill. And we're filming on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I was kind of inspired to do this video after watching my friend and fellow YouTuber. Uh, his channel is called Traveling On. You should check his channel out. He's got very much similar gear to what I have. He's got the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And he does a really good job, a better job than I do at breaking down the settings and everything else and showing his viewers exactly what tips and tricks you can do to get the best out of your cameras. He's got a ZV-E10. Um, so anyway, check his channel out. I will put his handle below and uh, let's get on with this. We're just about to light the grill here. I'm gonna go around. I've got a chimney starter here and um, yeah, gonna start the paper here and get it all nice and ready with the charcoal here. And hopefully I don't run out of light, guys. Uh, but if I do, we'll figure something out. And uh, so, yeah, you know, one of the good things about the Pocket 3, I was thinking in the car, how in the world am I gonna pull the Pocket 3 off? I should get a, um, a quick release. But putting it on this tripod here, I was thinking it kind of already has a quick release because I've got it on the battery extension. Let's see what happens if I just pull this thing off. Does it stay recording? Huh. Well, will you looky there? I've got a quick release. That has started pretty well. Here is my prepping station. In addition to, this is actually my kitchen, in addition to the steaks, we've got this Pick Sweet Farms, just convenient little grilling, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. Steaks are here. Um, we've got rosemary and sea salt bread. We're gonna do some olive oil, spice, dipping oil. And I've also got these jumbo blueberries that Parker picked out for kind of dessert, healthier dessert. We like those just as much. Um, I've also prepped this little tin foil thing with some um, apple wood in it so we can get some smoke flavor. And I'm gonna be using Chicago steak seasoning from Weber. So let's prep the steaks next. So now I've got the steaks on this piece of white wax paper here and I have rubbed them in, or actually drizzled this olive oil and pushed it all around um, each steak. And what I'm gonna do now is just cover the steak as much as possible with this Chicago steak seasoning. These are thick steaks, so we're gonna push the seasoning into each steak. We're kind of like encrusting this in this, um, in this spice or the Chicago steak spice here. What I do is I turn it with one hand and then I'll spread it all over each individual side here until it's almost completely covered. You don't want to go too, too heavy handed, but yeah, you just keep turning. And this is just the way I do it. I haven't been taught. This is not like, this is probably a combination of a, a lot of different types of recipes and just things that I've learned by doing this uh, time and time again. And then after we're done, we just take the wax paper and put the steaks in here. There we go. That is pretty much the finished product pre-cooking. And by the way, um, once it's covered and everything, you leave it set at room temperature while your grill is warming up. If it takes a little bit longer, these are thick steaks. They're gonna take quite a bit of heat to cook. I like to drop these when they still have some uh, coal or black to them, uh, but at least they're all caught on fire as of right now. That way you get the most optimal heat. All right, so I think we are gonna drop these things. I've got my gloves on here and uh, like to put these 
at the top for the direct heat. That leaves this area here for the indirect heat. So I need to get my other tongs uh, to um, spread these around well, but I can even, these gloves are so thick, I can kind of do it a little bit here like this. I think that looks good. We're gonna go get our wood so that it, um, place that down in the front there. So we just place that down there so that it starts the smoke flavor there. And then we'll grab this here all the way open for just a little while. And then we'll close these up right before we throw the steaks on. All right, guys, so we're definitely running out of light. So I'm glad that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 performs well in low light. I've got it on normal colors just so I didn't have to fiddle with anything because I'm also doing this. It's kind of difficult to multitask this out, but we got it smoking. You can smell it really good. We're going to place this pan right there at the top. Now we're going to place it on the side. All right, so now we're going to place the steaks. We're going to do a little bit of a crisscross here. I don't think, I think that's going to have to go somewhere else. May be able to, there we go. I think that'll work. Now we're going to calm this fire down because we don't want flame. For very long. And that's why we shut this to halfway. And we should start getting some really good smoke flavor on the meat. This is the only way to go, guys. This is going to be way better than any steakhouse. I promise you. As long as you don't cook them too little or too much. Which is pretty easy because I've got a meat thermometer. We are going to leave these on for about four minutes each side on direct heat and then we're going to move them to indirect heat. Now you can turn them so you get grill marks if you would like to as well, which we're probably going to do. One other thing that I've noticed about a charcoal grill is that if you close this halfway after you put your stuff on the direct heat, sometimes you'll want to open it up all the way because the temperature will go down a little bit on that. So we're going to open it up all the way and get a good sear. All right, so we're actually going to flip these. I actually turn them. Looks pretty good. Um, it could go maybe a little bit further. I'm going to flip these around a little bit. And I've already flipped this around because I'm trying to get it even, evenly um, cooked. So let's go another four minutes or so on the other side. All right, so I virtually have no light here, so thank you, DJI. I'm going to show you guys what I mean about turning these. It's hard to do. So you turn it from here to here uh, to get the grill marks right. Really don't get grill marks. With all of the, um, the smoke coming, it kind of covers up the grill marks anyway, but that's the idea. That may be a better angle for this. Now I'm going to move these to the indirect side. And we will cook these for a bit longer. Um, I think I'm feeling them. They're feeling actually rare, even though they don't look it. All right, not sure if you can see that, but we're going to temp these things out. Smack dab in the middle. That one's at 115. Not quite ready yet. This one here. 130. All right, guys, so here is the setup. And uh, let's see how the steaks turned out. Actually, this one here was temped out at like 130. I let it rest for a few minutes. This one was more like 140. We're gonna do this steak first. We're gonna split this steak. And if we have to, if we don't wanna eat this one here, we can save it for tomorrow. All right, guys, so this is the final product here. You can see that the insides look really good. The veggies and everything 
Bon appetit. All right, buddy. Tell me what you think. Not good? Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> I was, you were shaking your head no. You were going, mm, mm, mm. Oh, mm, 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 that's delicious. <laughs> Good dad steak. Better than um, Luigi's. <laughs> it's hard to beat it, man. Once you beat your the restaurants, it's hard to go back. I don't know what the minimum focus distance on this thing, but check out the size of that blueberry. Good Lord, look at that. Check it out, y'all. Parker got me a little Valentine's Day Reese's cup thingy.